have the right to teach that? Teacher. They do not. Public Local schools, schools do not have the right to not. teach what they feel. Well, there you go. Do you want a senator who's going to impose his school. beliefs? Talk about imposing your beliefs on the local school. Right. I'm saying that if the local community wants to teach the theory of evolution, it's up to the school board to decide. But when I made those remarks, it was because the school board wanted to also teach the theory of intelligent design, and the government said that they could not. You have just stated that you will impose your will over the local school district, and that is a blatant violation of our Constitution. And to be you clear, Ms. O'Donnell, Senator is going to do that. To be clear, Ms. O'Donnell, I believe that creationism is religious doctrine and that evolution How about the is broadly of accepted. Design? Creationism, which is theory, theory of intelligent design, is religious no, doctrine. Two different things. Evolution is widely accepted, well defended scientific fact. And our schools should be teaching science. If we want to instruct our children uh, in religious doctrine and religious practice, as my wife and I choose to, that's wonderful. That's what our churches are for. And that's what private or parochial schools are for. But our public schools should be teaching broadly accepted scientific fact, not religious doctrine. Wow, well, you've just proved how little you know, not just about constitutional law, but about the theory of evolution. Because the theory of evolution is not a fact. It is indeed a theory. But I'm saying that that theory, if local school districts want to give that theory equal credence to intelligent design, it is their right. You are saying it is not their right. Then that's, that is what has gotten our country into this position, is the overreaching arm of the federal government getting into the, the business of the local communities. The Supreme Court has always said it is up to the local communities to decide their standards. The reason we're in the mess we're in is because our so-called leaders in Washington no longer view the indispensable uh, principles of our founding as truly that, indispensable. We're supposed to have limited government, low tax rates. Right, okay, so one of those in indispensable principles is the separation of church and state. Okay, with that, um, very good dialogue. We appreciate that. Let's still move on so we can get to all the panelists and uh, cover a number of areas. Chad, a lot of good from the news front, please. Uh, well, where in the Constitution is separation of church and state? <laughs> <laughs> Stay on the Constitution page here. Uh, Ms. Adon, you have said that the Constitution will be a litmus test for how you vote in the Senate. Um, there have been a lot of changes in the Constitution since it was ratified two or three years ago. Some Republicans and Tea Party members have called for uh, repeal of some, of some constitutional amendments. What are your thoughts about repealing the 14th, the 16th, and the 17th amendments? 17th Amendment I would not repeal. That's the amendment that puts the power to, uh, uh, for the, the state government to determine who represents you in Washington. Um, I support that. I, I mean, I support the free election process of that. If you can, I'm sorry I didn't bring my Constitution with me. Um, fortunately, senators don't have to memorize the Constitution. Well, can you let me remind me of what the other ones are? 14th Amendment defines citizenship. And the 16th oh. Amendment, I think you should know what the 16th Amendment is. <laughs> Federal income tax? Okay. Uh, no, I, I support lowering the income tax, but that amendment gives the, the Congress the power to tax. Now, I, of all people, want to reform the IRS. I do believe that we desperately need tax reform. Um, citizenship, you're talking about illegal immigration. I think that we have to close the borders before we discuss any sort of amnesty or dream act or anything in terms of, uh, but our country has always welcomed people from other lands. We are a magnet because people want to come over and pursue the American dream. But we have made it harder and harder to do exactly that when it comes to taxation and over-regulation that has strayed from the original principles. That's fine, Ms. O'Donnell, thank you. Mr. Coons? A great question, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, of course, I would uphold the 14th, 16th, and 17th Amendments to the Constitution. And I think it is exactly uh, one of the real challenges in this election season to the public, um, to our voters, um, that the Tea Party and folks who ask us to consider repealing these central amendments um, raises. And it's part of why I really hope that listeners are paying close attention to the answers you're hearing today uh, and to the principles and values that both of the candidates in front of you are laying out. What I think Delaware voters want to hear about today is jobs, the economy moving forward, 
But a senator also has to understand the Constitution, be able to interpret it and apply it, and vote in Supreme Court justices. I absolutely oppose the widespread proposals by Tea Party candidates for us to repeal the 14th, 16th, or 17th Amendments. I also think you've just heard in the answers from my opponent and in her attempt at saying, where is the separation of church and state in the Constitution, reveals her fundamental misunderstanding of what our Constitution is, how it is amended, and how it evolves. The First Amendment, the First Amendment, establishes the separation, the fact that the federal government shall not establish any religion, and decisional law by the Supreme Court over many, many decades. The First clarifies Amendment and enshrines, Clarifies and enshrines that there is a separation of church and state that our courts and our laws must respect. So you're back telling me that the separation Wade, of church and state, the separation Wade, of church and state is Back to Roe v. Wade Amendment. and the Griswold question earlier, the zone of privacy is something that the Supreme Court interpreted um, the Bill of Rights and several of those amendments um, to create. It is important for us in modern times to apply the Constitution, in my view, as it exists today and as it's been interpreted by our justices. And if there are settled pieces of constitutional law, like the separation of church and state, like uh, the individual right to reproductive freedom that Roe versus Wade represents, that we've lived with and have, have lived under for decades, in my view, um, it is important to know whether you have on my side uh, a candidate okay. who believes and supports those things, and on the other side, a candidate who's both unfamiliar with Let me just with clarify. Please. You're telling me that the separation of church and state is found in the First Amendment. The government shall make no establishment of religion. That's in the First Amendment. All right, 8.15 here on 1150 AM, but in ETL, you are listening to a live debate. We are at Wyoming University School of Law this morning between U.S. Senate candidate Christian <laughs> Donald. And uh, let's move on to the next question. You don't question. know when you see that. Delaware today. <laughs> I think you both position yourself as pretty independent voters. <laughs> and if this election is about anything, it's about the satisfaction of the current leadership. So I'd like to know. Or would you please give us one or two examples of where you agree with your party's leadership and where you think you differ with the party's leadership? Mr. Coons, why don't you start this time? Um, I've given several examples in the past. Um, I'm going to assume, in my case, you mean my party's leadership.